The following short informational presentation was done at the request of numerous activists who asked me to address the claims of power plant cooling towers being used to supply the atmospheric moisture for climate engineering. The battle to fully expose and halt climate engineering is the most important challenge of our time. The only chance we have of prevailing in this epic battle is by standing on solid and factually verifiable conclusions. Anything less will guarantee our collective failure in this fight. Anything less than this will guarantee that we will have no chance of uniting with the so far afraid to speak out climate science communities and agency officials. How is the critical cause of exposing and halting climate engineering being harmed by many of the very individuals and sources who claim to be fighting to stop climate engineering? By propagation of patently false information and conclusions that completely discredit the entire anti-geoengineering community. What's the most recent glaring example of verifiably false and discrediting information being pushed by some individuals and websites? Many are claiming that most or all of the atmospheric moisture and precipitation for massive storms like Hurricane Harvey is coming from land-based cooling towers, which are a component of power generating facilities. The same sources are claiming that there's some sort of ocean-based, quote, water vapor machines that fuel the creation of storms over the oceans, even storms like Hurricane Harvey. They claim that the rising convection cells seen in satellite images of Harvey over the extremely warm Gulf of Mexico is proof of these water vapor machines, even though such a machine has never been photographed or documented in any way, shape, or form. Are we to believe the conclusions that trillions upon trillions of gallons of atmospheric moisture could be somehow pumped into the atmosphere to feed a hurricane like Hurricane Harvey? Again, this is a verifiably false narrative, which completely discredits the anti-geoengineering cause. Let's consider what we can see with our own eyes. In the case of Hurricane Harvey, as Harvey was circulating across the superheated Gulf of Mexico, countless bursts of convective cloud formation and moisture can be seen rising into the atmosphere and collapsing from within Harvey's circulation. Again, are we to actually believe that some sort of water vapor machine is floating around in the middle of a hurricane spraying water into the sky? A quote, ocean-based water vapor machine that has never been documented again in any way, shape, or form. A water vapor machine that is somehow able to spray evaporating water into the sky in the middle of a hurricane in pouring rain with 100% humidity in which no evaporation could possibly occur in the first place due to the 100% humidity. The laws of physics make this fact completely clear and inarguable. Anyone who's ever seen a convective storm form, especially over arid desert regions, knows that such storms are extremely common with clouds that appear from formerly blue skies and rise tens of thousands of feet into the atmosphere. Are there invisible water vapor machines under such occurrences? Of course not. Can power plant cooling towers create impressive cloud formations under the right conditions? Absolutely yes. Do such cloud formations contain even the slightest fraction of the moisture being produced by storms like Harvey? Absolutely not. As Hurricane Harvey moved over land, the quote, cooling towers are supplying all the moisture claim continues. Let's do some math on that one. With the single exception of uncommon geothermal power plants, the highest water consumption rate of any form of power production facility is only 920 gallons per megawatt hour. Further, many power plants are now using dry cooling technology as water's a limited commodity, of course. The question must be asked, how could a limited number of power plants with cooling towers supply the moisture for Hurricane Harvey, which has already dumped more than 25 trillion gallons of water on Texas and Louisiana alone and counting? The answer is, they couldn't. Such a notion is completely impossible. Now let's take a look at one of the so-called storm cloud weather making machines that's been featured in videos from sources that are disseminating the water vapor machines are supplying the moisture for storms, false narrative. Yes, this video looks very impressive at first glance and countless individuals and sites ran with it. Unfortunately, those same sources and sites did no due diligence investigation whatsoever. What's the true nature of the machine shown in this video? Many have claimed it was a weather modification test done in the U.S. with FEMA officials present. Now the truth. It's a primitive Russian tank D-1 
decontamination vehicle, and the film was made in Russia with Russian military personnel. All the claims about this vehicle, what it does, what it's capable of doing, were patently false. Again, what does the Russian TMC-65 actually do? What's it for? What's its function? To decontaminate tanks on the battlefield. Again, this primitive vehicle has absolutely nothing to do with weather modification. And then there is the highly referenced NASA cloud-making machine, so-called. What's this NASA facility actually for? What are they actually doing there? Are there 25 trillion gallons of water hiding somewhere under this facility? The NASA facility is for testing rocket engines, not weather modification, because a few raindrops may sometimes fall from the rocket engine testing under ideal conditions. Are we to believe that such tests could somehow supply 25 trillion gallons to the atmosphere that would then come back down and cover massive regions with record flooding, like what just happened with Hurricane Harvey? And are we to believe that there are perhaps hundreds or thousands of these facilities secretly hidden all over the country, which makes all the rain with some sort of invisible moisture source? Though the plume that is emitted from the NASA facility does indeed look impressive, it's still nothing more than a rocket engine testing facility. And now let's consider reality, a reality that our warming planet will intensify the hydrological cycle. The atmosphere holds 7% more moisture for every degree C of warming. Are the climate engineers manipulating the climate? Yes. Is weather warfare a reality? Yes. Even against citizens of the US? Yes again. Is the climate engineering and weather warfare further fueling the overall planetary meltdown, creating short-term cooldowns at the cost of an even worse overall warming and many other very dire effects? Yes again. What is actually fueling hurricanes? Rapidly warming oceans. There's no scientific dispute of this fact. Some final points to consider and remember. Weather modification methods that attempt to seed condensation nuclei into the clouds from a ground location are real. The seeding station in this image is an example of one such facility, but here's the point. There's a very big difference between trying to seed clouds and the claims that trillions of gallons are being somehow pumped into the atmosphere to fuel hurricanes. Here's the bottom line. The global power structure is now waging an all-out weather warfare on populations around the globe. There are many, many agendas behind what's happening in our skies. Not a simple this or that equation. Many agendas being carried out. Many related to trying to hide the damage already done to the climate by inflicting yet more damage at the same time. The global covert climate engineering assault is the greatest and most immediate threat we face short of nuclear cataclysm. How do we help this cause? If you want to help, stick to the science terms, climate engineering, geoengineering, solar radiation management, cloud albedo enhancement, or other related hard science terms. When you share data on social media or with others, know what you're sharing, know if it's credible. Take some time to actually investigate. Stop and use your own sense of reason when encountering sensationalized claims that are, in the case of the power plant cooling towers supplying hurricane moisture claim, mathematically impossible and completely harmful to the credibility of the anti-climate engineering cause, as is the case of the sensationalized cloud-making machines already covered in this video, both of which also had, as already stated, exactly nothing to do with weather modification. Credibility is absolutely crucial in the fight against the ongoing geoengineering atrocities in our skies. Credibility is crucial in the fight for the greater good. Make sure you're standing on solid ground at all times in this battle. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.